All right. So not that any of this necessarily matters or that you ask for an opinion, but I just got off the phone with CenturyLink, um, which is maybe if you're outside of Omaha, Nebraska and have not heard of CenturyLink, I don't know. I think it's kind of a an established company across the United States. I don't know where they're at though, but one of the internet providers for Omaha, Nebraska is CenturyLink. It's uh, the actual internet is not that bad. If you're streaming, um, my kid doesn't seem to have a problem with it when he's gaming, stuff like that. So the actual internet, once you're able to get a hold of it, isn't terrible. But if you're thinking about using CenturyLink, one thing that you have to be prepared for terrible, terrible customer service. The worst customer service that I think I've ever come across, ever. And I'm just gonna go, I'll go over basically my three encounters with them because when I, I, I kinda needed to, let's just plain and simple, I went broke. <laughs> so I needed some cheap internet. Um, and I decided to go with the cheapest option, which was CenturyLink. Uh, when I called them up, I was actually kind of surprised because uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over the three encounters with you at CenturyLink. So the first encounter, at first, it seemed like it was a really awesome deal. I called and I was interested in the area uh, because I thought I had seen something about fiber optic. And fiber optic is supposed to be, you know, the next level of Internet. It's supposed to give you, you know, offer really good speed, stuff like that. So when I spoke to somebody... And we were talking about fiber optic line. And you have to forgive me, I'm not technical. I don't understand how a lot of this stuff works. So it was my understanding there was going to be super fast fiber optic internet. Um, and that's what the salesperson sold me on. I was like, great, let's do that. That's actually really decent price for all that, blah, blah, blah. And when the technician arrived, we're talking about a week later, the technician arrives. And I see them, you know, hooking up the phone line, all this stuff. And when I mentioned the fiber optic, they were just like, he kind of laughed. He chuckled about it. He's like, no, we don't, we don't do fiber optic. I mean, he did, he said that it wasn't available in my area. Again, I'll have to check and see if it, if CenturyLink even offers that in some areas. What struck me on it is the salesperson that I was talking to found out that I was interested in, found out what I was interested in, and they just kind of pounced on whatever he thought would get me to sign up for it. Um, so I ended up not setting up the service the first time. Uh, and then I called him back. I said I was upset about that. Um, and anyways, long story short, I did end up getting it set up. I finally got it set up. I checked it out. And the, like I said, the internet was not bad. If it, it was decent for what we were doing. Uh, it, the one thing I did notice is that uploads were really slow. So if you're uploading a lot of things, if you want to upload photo, photos, upload videos, stuff like that, it is very slow, and once you do that, it also bogs everything else down. So if you're trying to upload photos to the cloud or to something else from your phone, or if you're trying to upload a video to the internet, it'll bog down the rest of the internet. So uh, that's one thing I did notice that I did not have a problem when I was with Cox, is that the upload speeds for the cheaper package wasn't that great. That wasn't really a big deal to me. So the second encounter is when I had moved. So I moved and we transferred the service over to another address. When they did that, for some reason, they started two different accounts. So they just started a new account for the new address. And I just called and said, I need to transfer service um, and whatever. So we transferred service and they just started a new account for me. They kept the accounts running congruent and they were collect, they were charging for the other account and for this account at the same time. I don't know how that happened, but something tells me it was with that sales again. When you call to make the transfer, I don't know if they just got a benefit for going over to and setting a new account. I have no idea, but I was upset that they didn't just transfer service. They started me on a new service, which didn't make any sense at all. Um, and so as a part of that also as a moving bonus, I didn't say anything. I didn't ask for anything, but they said, since you're sticking with us and being a valued customer, we're going to send you a gift card for $100. Uh, waited about a month. I didn't get that gift card. And then when I called, they said, oh, well, the gift card, it looks like it was mailed to somebody else, like the previous address. I don't know. I'm not even sure if it was the truth. 
I think they just forgot to send it or just forgot to send it or didn't send it. One of the two. Anyway, they said they would send it. So they mailed it back out. Uh, after about two and a half months, I finally did get that gift card, which was, you know, it's cool. They really didn't have to do it, but just the fact that they kind of fumbled that up too. Uh, so this takes me to the the third encounter, the one that I'm kind of going through right now. So I'm in this address. I've been here and I've had the internet set up. Um, and I let my, I didn't pay my bill. And, you know, I don't really pay attention to the emails and everything. So shame on me. You know, it was my fault that the bill got disconnected. And I'm looking at the email now where they did warn me to say, if you do not pay by this time, you know, it's going to be disconnected. So the thing is, I don't, you know, they send emails all the time, whether it's an email to let you know the bill's coming up or, you know, different emails. It's a company. I don't go through and check every email um, or every bill that is sent out. What I do is I'll go to the website and check the due date. So I was um, more than a month behind, which wasn't the most that I've been behind with them before, but I was behind on that bill. And so they disconnected the service, even though the due date on the at the website said it was due like the whatever the sixth. Let's just, it was due the sixth. Um, I go back and check this email where it did in fact tell me that if I didn't pay by the thirtieth, that it was going to be disconnected. But you know, besides that, that's my confusion. I was looking at it and I was confused because the website was saying you've got to pay. You know, your next due date is the sixth. And that's what I was confused about. And not really confused about, but that's what I was waiting on. So when the 30th rolled by and they disconnected it, I was upset. I gave them a call. And then whenever you give them a call, you've got hold times. You don't know who you're talking to or where it goes. It's one of those companies that use customer service lines all across the world. You have to, you know, enter prompts, uh, even the the chat function online, it's all kind of a headache. And they end up making promises that the finance department won't go through with stuff like that. But that's another story. So anyways, I end up getting into it with somebody and this was over chat because they, I felt like my confusion, you know, they, they should have, if I made the payment, turn it back on, but they wanted to do a reconnect fee, which I absolutely hate reconnect fees. I understand everybody's doing reconnect fees. And again, this was my fault. But I was saying, hey, let, have have a little bit of leniency. But the whole time that I was doing it, these people talk over me. Like I'm trying to explain my situation to them and they're just doubling down and reinforcing why they're right and I was wrong. And they just keep doubling down on that and keep talking over me to the point where I was just like, you know what? Your service sucks. Your Internet's not that great. You know, just Blah, blah, blah. And, and then the person on the chat was just like, well, I can cancel the service for you. And I said, yeah, just cancel the service. And so I was upset. I didn't really want to cancel the service, but that's what it was. And so, you know, it came down to that. They tested me. They and they called my bluff, basically. So they canceled the service. Next day, I'm like, look, um, let's just pay. Let's just get this reactivated. And they're like, oh, no, sorry. Too late. It's been canceled. So before I go on to, I'm not going to try to take this more than past 10 minutes. So that all happened. And keep in mind that this, we're still linked up here. So we're set up for CenturyLink. We have it connected. It's the same modem. I was asking for the same service. And now I'm waiting on a technician. Why? Who knows? They tell me that I need a technician out here. The person that I talked to today was telling me, well, we're not sure what you have out there. That's why we need to set a technician up. When I was trying to tell them, maybe you can look up the old account number. Hey, I have the old account number. They just talk right over. you, just like, since we don't know what you have and it's a two line. And I don't know what the hell they were talking about, but they were trying to tell me why I needed a technician out there. And I'm trying to explain why do you need a technician out here? I'm trying to get the same exact Internet that I had Friday. You know, it's Monday now. I had this Friday. Why can't I just get that same thing? And they're telling me that I need a technician out. Why do you think we need a technician out? Oh, yeah, because you can charge for a technician to come out. I can understand if maybe somebody had to come here and physically disconnect something, but they didn't. Nobody had to come out and physically disconnect somebody, something. Nobody had to come climb a pole. So why are they sending a technician out? Why now do I have to wait? Not only that, when I had to set up this new account, I called and I had to talk to sales again. 
And so sales this time, the third time that I talked to sales, they said, well, we'll be out, you know, what day, what day works for you? And I was talking to them Friday and I'm like, well, great Monday. If you can make it out Monday, that'd be awesome. Oh yeah, no problem. We'll be out Monday between eight and noon. Guess what? I'm off Monday and it's eight, eight to noon. It's getting closer to that noon time. Uh, got a message from my kid. So it's getting closer to that noon time. And guess what? Nobody's showing up. So I call CenturyLink and they're saying, oh, well, we have you down Wednesday, the 18th. And I'm, I'm like, are you serious? Pull the phone call. Check it out. But they just act like, oh, there's nothing we can do about it. You're down for the 18th. So that's when we'll be out. Um, the person that I did talk to, well, we'll try to get a technician. We do apologize for this. We might be able to get a technician out there if they be, or if they're able to free up some time or something like that. So I hate CenturyLink. It's one of the worst companies that I've ever worked with. As soon as I can afford to, which isn't going to be too long, I am going to go back to any other internet service provider because the customer service here is so horrible and so just frustrating that it's really not worth it. If you're able to get it set up, and if you're able to get a truthful sales representative, it probably is worth it because CenturyLink, like I said, for, for what I need it for, it's been decent, but laundry's done. But if you need, like, if you need to speak to a representative, if you have any if you, issues at all, buckle up because you're going to be on a frustrating ride from hell. And I guess... That's all I got to say about it. I don't know. Like I said, maybe nobody cares what I'm saying in this video. Maybe nobody will watch it. But I feel like I had to do something to get the word out there about how terrible this company is with their customer service. So take it for what it's worth.